how to make a mixed mode operation building in Energy Plus. And a mixed mode operation building is one that uses heating and cooling systems sometimes and uses natural ventilation sometimes. Um, traditionally, this is done to extend the periods when you can use natural ventilation and only rely on heating and cooling when the building envelope can't um, provide comfort given the climate and internal loads. I've got here my baseline building for uh, Worcester 214. I'm going to run this without an HVAC system. I'm going to change this, save this file as 21 no HVAC. And to delete, to get rid of the HVAC system, you near, merely just need to delete the HVAC objects. When you do this, make sure you don't delete other things by mistake. So there's only two objects here. There's this object, the thermostat, which I'm going to delete. And now there's also the HVAC template ideal load system. And I'm going to delete this as well. And that's it. I'm going to save this and run both the the baseline and the no HVAC, and we'll come back when this is done simulating. Okay, so we're done simulating, and now I need to copy the variables file into my uh, dashboard. And uh, But um, I've already pasted the variables from the base file, and if we go to the year, uh, you can see that this file is using a lot of cooling and a little bit of heating. By the way, I modeled this in um, Tampa, Florida to simulate a more hot, humid climate than Oakland. So you can get a sense of this a little bit better. This is a better illustration. And um, these graphs here, I'm going to just focus on the left for a second, uh, show this is heating and cooling use. This is the lighting energy. And then equipment use, you can see the summer vacation going on here. The ventilation fan energy is all static. It's exactly the same all the time because I've just got the ventilation fan for um, occupancy and area that's uh, always on. And then process loads, which is really using the equipment schedule. So it looks like that, but it's got a whole lot less uh, power, so the dots are smaller. And finally, hot water, which is consistent all year. I didn't. I don't have a separate schedule for this um, that minimizes the summer use. Now, for any of these, if you want to change the bubble size, you can use these these uh, controls on the left. Um, and so, for instance, I've got very big cooling bubbles here. And so, if I want to reduce it, I actually have to reduce the size. I need to make uh, a larger value. So I'm going to just add a zero. And you'll see they all get a little smaller. Now I can see individual ones a little better. And it takes a little bit of fine tuning to get it to where it's a good size. Uh, I try and make it as big as possible so that I can still see uh, where I can still see what's going on. So maybe something like that. Now keep in mind this is set to 300,000 and this is only set to 40,000. If I set this to 300,000, then these are going to get pretty tiny because now this is set to, the, to display the same amount of relative energy. You can see that the heating and cooling are using a lot l more energy than the lighting is. But I also can't really see the lighting very well here. And as I get to the ones that use almost no energy like ventilation or process loads, there's nothing to see anymore. So I like to keep these at a different scale and something I can see a little bit better like like something like that, or even a, a little bit um, smaller there. And right now, uh, the, the, all of these, the lighting, equipment, ventilation, and process loads and hot water are all keyed to the same uh, cell. So when I change the lighting energy, the equipment size also changes along with it. You can see that references that. Uh, but you can override that just by entering a different number. And so if I wanted the equipment to get to be a little bit smaller or larger, I could customize that. 
Okay, so you can see that in the baseline building, the heating and cooling systems are using a, a lot of energy. If I, and actually while I've got this, on the right hand side, you can see um, indoor and outdoor temperature against the adaptive comfort zone. So the black lines here are the adaptive comfort zone and the blue line is the indoor temperature or zone operative temperature and the gray line is the outdoor temperature. The cooling system is working. It's maintaining temperatures at the thermostat set points. And you can kind of see here, if I zoom in maybe a little bit more, you can see the difference between a weekday and, uh, and a weekend. Uh, there's a looks like there's a setback going on here. Um, and there's even a, a day and night setback going on here. Uh, same thing's going on in the wintertime where uh, you see sometimes these temperatures dip down. These are probably on weekends or night times when no one is there. And then during the daytime it comes back up. Uh, keep in mind that this comfort zone doesn't necessarily follow the thermostat. So the thermostat is a is set, uh, set point. Um, I think it's something like 22 or 21 degrees Celsius for heating and 26 or so for cooling. But the adaptive comfort zone is actually larger than that. It's important to note here that in a building with HVAC systems, the adaptive comfort zone is not considered a valid uh, comfort zone because we're used to air conditioning or heating that's not um, the expectation is to have these larger bands and it's not necessarily a naturally ventilated building. We'll get to this in a second what happens when you do have a naturally ventilated building. Thermal autonomy, this is the next one down, is a metric that I've kind of invented that is a measure of how autonomous the the building is. This is meant to be run in, you can see here, an unconditioned zone. So here with a conditioned zone, it's primarily a white graph, meaning that almost all the hours are within this comfort zone. There are a few hours like this, these two right here, or three, that are a little bit above, and these guys over here that are a little above, and that's why actually you're seeing this little yellow streak there and the yellow streak there. Um, and those are probably weekends where the cooling system isn't on. And the same with the the um, heating here, you can see it gets quite cold, but that's because of the setback. So this essentially has very little meaning when you've got the HVAC system on. Let's turn the, let's see what happens when we uh, input with the HVAC system off. I'm gonna paste in my no HVAC system variables. and then go to the year tab. Now it looks a whole lot different. I've eliminated my heating and cooling and now I can see that much of the time we're experiencing overheating. We're experiencing very little uh, underheating and you can see the statistical breakdown here of 1.2 percent of the year is above eight degrees above comfort and remember that comfort is a moving target here because it's adaptive comfort. In fact, I'll go up here now you can see um, relative to the comfort zone that uh, the indoor temperatures are by and large above the comfort zone without a cooling system on. Sometimes they're below and that mimics what's going on here. If we go back over to the energy use, you'll see that the heating and cooling has gone away, right? The, our heating and cooling is zero because there's no heating and cooling system. The lighting is still working. The equipment is still working, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I hope that distinction is clear. It's sometimes confusing for a lot of people that why these graphs are here uh, relative to the different uses.